Hello and welcome everybody to my weekly live stream. I'm Jerry and this is 3D HP. Today I've got a really super special guest on. I've got Joe Telling, 3D printing nerd. Let me bring him in. There I am. Hey, Joe. Hey, Jerry. How you doing? doing great. Good to see you. Excellent. Thank you very much for being on my stream. Mm. Not a problem, my friend. Not a problem. Let me say hi to a few people in chat. Do Dan, it. Dan, DB3D. Non-fam, hello. SPC 3D, sorry. <laughs> 3D Print Llama, hello, Tom. Tyler West. Um, we're streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube. If you're Fantastic. watching on Facebook, above the stream link, there's a URL you need to click. That way, when you type, I can see your name in chat and I can post it. Oh, it doesn't happen automatically? No, for some reason, Facebook won't pop up on a YouTube stream. I have to manually click them and show them. Interesting. Like, for instance, where'd it go? Like, there it says Facebook user how's everything. I'm not oh, sure yeah. that is. I'm not either. So, but that's okay. We'll work it out. I'm sure we will. It anyway. won't be a problem. Yeah, I know. We were going to be on later on the, today, but your son has practice. I That's believe. right. So, you know, thank you very much for rescheduling. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah. We can fit you in. We, we, at least we maintain the day, right? Got to got to keep it on the Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, right? Is it well, Tuesday? Right. Yes, Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm here in Vegas, and I believe you're in Seattle. Yes, here in Seattle. Yeah. Well, anyway, if I could, uh, I'd like to ask you the first question. Is, Do it. it Do it. <laughs> Why got you interested in 3D printing and about when? Uh, it was it was 2013 and 2014. I was interested in it because it's a nerdy thing. Uh, it was always something that uh, I, I, I followed online. Like I saw articles on Slashdot. Uh, I would watch Tom's Sand Ladderer. And uh, I saw the stuff that Jerry over at uh, Barnacle's, Jerry, you know, Barnacle's Nerdgasm was doing. So I always wanted to get into it. And then Christmas of 2014 is when my family got me a printer for Christmas. And that's how it all started, like all of it right there. That's how it started. What was your first printer? It was a Flash Forge Creator Pro. Wow. Yeah, I've never had one. It, you don't need them. It's, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's old. It's fine. I mean, just get yourself a... I'm not one of those. <laughs> yeah, years ago, I seen the printers were real expensive. Uh, a lot of them looked like they were made out of balsa wood or something. And the print quality was terrible. And then, I don't know, like three years ago, I was watching a video of some man and his wife touring the country in an RV, and they had a little printer. I don't remember what it was. And that got me more interested seeing the print quality. So then I joined a couple of Facebook groups. I got on a big CR10 group. And I noticed that Kevin Sharp, a friend of mine over in the UK, was printing some really awesome models by Sanix. Like, oh my God, I got to have this. So there I was. I got a CR10 and now I got carried away. So perfect. It's been a lot of fun. Hello, Tor. Glad to see you. Um, question number two How many number printers? Two. You, how many printers do you think you have owned and do you have a favorite? Um, my favorite printer, I always say this, my favorite printer is the one that's loaded with the filament I want to use and near me and ready to go. I, I, cause, uh, it depends on the, on the day, the time, the size of the model, uh, what, what material I want to make it in, like the, the purpose, uh, all of that stuff. So I don't really have a fa I mean, I've, I've got printers that I love to use, but there's so many of them. Uh, and so I don't really have a favorite. I just, it's just whichever one is ready to receive my love, essentially. Do you uh, have a good, sorry? Well, I was going to say, and then, because you asked about how many have I owned and uh, too many. <laughs> I've lost count. I've honestly lost count. It's probably, it's probably over a hundred. I would guess wow. over, over the last five years. It's, it's easily, it's easily over a hundred. And I see not too long ago, you got into resin printing and doing some really big prints, a lot of really cool stuff. That's like right. Like Geeky Phase vase. Uh, yeah, that vase was awesome, man. The, the Prusa SL1 produced that in a, in a wonderful way. Uh, and then the Phenom Noir did that really big one. And that was cool, too. That was cool. I really like that. That's smoky resin. And I always thought resin was so dangerous in which, you know, you have to be careful, wear gloves, wear glasses. 
but I worked in construction for 35 years. I've dealt with a zillion chemicals, working on cars, gasoline. So after I seen your video saying it really, you don't really have a reaction to it. I, te I tested that and wiped some on the back of my wrist and left it on there for a while. And I guess I don't have a re reaction either because I basically thought it was like acid and it's going to burn right away and freak me out. And that didn't happen. I'll well, that's good. I'm glad it didn't happen. I'm glad you're safe. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> thing that people have to worry about is uh, like, I may not have a reaction, but then it comes to just being one day, all of the sudden I have a reaction and then going forward forever, I will have a reaction. And so really it, it pays to be as safe as you possibly can with it. I mean, at the very least gloves and a respirator when you're dealing with all that stuff, because even though, uh, even though you might not have a reaction to it right now, if you ever get one, you will forever have one. And I yes. think uh, that's, that's the sensitivity thing. Right. And I don't, I don't want to get that way. Because it could yeah. be that uh, it could be that you then aren't able to go into the like it could be all of the sudden you develop a sensitivity and then all of a sudden you can't go in the same room as a resin machine like it, that that is a real scenario and so it's better just to be safe because then uh, you won't be sorry. You know that stopped me for a long time getting a resin printer the odors and how am I going to vent it outside the window etc cetera, etc cetera. and then I. When I first got the Elegoo Mars, I was trying the Elegoo resin and I could barely smell it. Once the print was done, I took off the top. I could barely notice it then. But other than that, the odor didn't bother me. And I do have a air purifier on the floor. It's a Win Air or Win X that I run occasionally. It helps, it helps filter a little bit. But I've had no chemical problems or smells with any of my uh, prints, my printers or resin printers. That's good. That's good. And I hope it stays that way, obviously. <laughs> uh it's just one of those things. Like certain resins stink more than other resins. It depends on their chemical makeup, and uh, you just if you just want to be as safe as possible. Have you tried any water soluble resin yet? No, not yet. I have some, and I just haven't put it to use yet. Uh, I'm set up for non water washing at the moment, and to mm -hmm. set up. For, I mean, I gotta find a bucket, you know, fill it full of water, and. Uh, I could do that at some point, but I've got so many other things that I'm doing right now. Like if I if I have my stack list of stuff to do, that's kind of towards the bottom. Um, I seen a, bit, a clip, a picture yesterday on Twitter. Somebody posted a parts washer like used in, out in your garage to wash parts on your engine. You buy them at Harbor Freight as an example. It's got a big tub with legs, a lid that if it was to get hot, the lid would slam down. It's got a little spring-loaded doohickey on it that if there was ever a fire from gasoline... The lid, the lid will slam. It's got a pump with a flexible arm to spray whatever chemical you have in there for cleaning parts. And that is a perfect giant resin printer, a giant resin a washing station, basically. I agree. I agree. So, that would be that would be fantastic. I mean, right now we have some large resin machines and a lot of more and more people are getting them. And so if you have like an Elegoo Mars, you really, I mean, I don't think you need that big. I don't think you need that big of a resin cleaning station, but I, I mean, if you can afford it and you got the room for it, you might as well go big and then just plan to get a bigger resin machine later on. Anyone in uh, chat have any questions for uh, either one of us? Joel's here. He's ready to answer questions. So if you have anything to say, please say it now. <laughs> sure. I'll answer some questions. No one's got questions. Everybody already watches my videos or they don't. I don't know. Uh, I have a link in the description to Joel's channel if no one is a subscriber to Joel on YouTube for 3D Printing Nerd down below. And there's a cool little... There's a mini Joel right there. Mini Joel and a little Chris Warcocky. They can sit there and have a conversation. That's right. Uh, chat about... Have a he can chat about the hair on top of my head and I can chat about the hair on the bottom of his face. Yeah, I've got an upcoming video which might be out tonight and this is part of it right here. It's Chucky. Little Chucky. You gonna paint him? Oh uh, yeah. Well, uh, my wife will say no. It'll just sit there for six months or a year. Eventually, he'll get painted. So, yeah, I, I literally, That's if great. I quit printing right now, I could, for the rest of my life, if I live to be a hundred, I have enough stuff that I could paint daily for the rest of my life. Jeez, man. What's? No, I didn't. Tom had a question. I missed a question. My wife just came in and said, "Answer it." Uh oh. Come on. Betty, uh, right? You got to listen to Betty. Yeah. Betty, Betty Boot 45. I heard that there was free pizza. Ah, wouldn't that be nice? I don't see the question I'm supposed to answer. 
Well, here we can go through because I can see the chat. Amanda Macias said, Joel, what's for dinner? And tonight, I don't know the answer to that. I just installed the BK app and there's some deals in there. I got some of the, the Nando's, uh, Nando's sauce that Matt Stoltz tweeted about and it tastes good on chicken nuggets. And I can get nuggets and fries real cheap using the BK app. So I might, uh, I, m- I might do that. <laughs> Uh, Jocko, Jocko Norchi, evening gents from South Africa. It's far away. What is your most favorite printers? Uh, we covered that. Jerry already asked me. Just uh, just uh, go to the stream and back it up just a little bit. That was one of the first ones, right, Jerry? Yeah. Here's a <laughs> picture. Playmate 3D. Like- what was that? Here's a picture I'd like to show. Oh, do I do it. Posted yeah. on Twitter. I sure did. That was one. Sure did. That printer costs like thirty-eight grand. It's a loaner to you. And thirty-eight thousand dollar three D printer from three D platform called the three hundred series Workbench Pro. What's the build and that volume? Line, uh, the build volume is one meter by one meter by 0.7 meter. Uh, it's huge. That's nice. It is. It's 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 quite large. And so that picture that you showed. That uh, that line around the build plate, that was the skirt of the print. And uh, mm-hmm. it should be, <sighs> the control box says it's going to finish in six hours. We'll see. But um, it'll take two spools of filament, just two, just two. Uh-oh. I re- from Llama? Yeah. Yeah, I, I showed on screen. Okay. Thank you. I'm in trouble. Thanks, She's assistant. My director. She's my director. Asking. She's great. Do you have a favorite print that you've ever done? Or is everyone a favorite print? Um, that's a really good question. One of my favorite prints uh, was when I moved that thing that fixed the refrigerator. We still have that refrigerator and that print is still in there and it's still working great. Um, man, the, the problem is, you. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong, it, tell me if you feel this as well, but when you print something, it's almost imbibed with the, um, the how you feel during the day when it's printing and what's happening during the day, news of the day, uh, uh, life events that have happened. Like I'll, I'll hold a print and be like, oh yeah, this was printing during that one time. And this is how I felt. I remember being so happy because of X. And so, well, uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily have a favorite print. Um, I, I have lots of prints who bring back a lot of really awesome favorite memories. I hope that makes sense. I don't quite feel that way. I just kind of print it. That's cool. And I go on to the next one. But <laughs> anyway, so Jacko, emotion. On, Jacko on face, uh, Facebook got a question. Okay. Okay. Let's ask you this. What would you do if 3D printing didn't exist? I think life would be pointless. <laughs> no, it would be pointless. It'd be a lot easier, to be honest. It would be, it'd be, uh, it'd be a lot easier, and uh, I'd probably, uh, I, I'd probably not weigh as much. I'd probably be more active. <laughs> I, I'd have to find a, another way to to make money for the family. I don't know. My garage would be filled with what other cool tool if three D printing didn't exist, right? It would just be full of other stuff. Mike over at Never Let the Machines Win has a question. What is your least favorite print? One that you uh, they hated you and vice versa. Hmm. I don't have one. I don't have one. I have no... Even the stuff that fails, you learn from it. And it's a teachable moment. And you move on a better human. So... It's really hard to to say that I I have a least favorite print because even the ones that have even when my uh, my old GMAX had the hot end that got engulfed in plastic and we used fire to try to fix it, it was it it sucked but but it still it provided a moment where I could try something test something see if it worked and learn from the experience so it wasn't it wasn't. It wasn't just a this sucks and then I move on from it. I used I used that to create a moment that I learned from. And so even even stuff that fails still doesn't I don't have a non-favorite print because I, I try to utilize them all in some way. Mac 3D 3D design has a question. If you could have any printer right now to evaluate, which one would it be? Oh, it's the one that he carried on his shoulder and 
<laughs> he's got it's the one it's the one that Carl is getting uh, his content freebooted all the time. Yeah, that that uh, that was it. The CR thirty, right? The Creality Belt Printer. I think that. Uh, I mean, I was a big fan of the White Knight. Got some of my teeth there. I was a big fan of the White Knight, and I think Carl was an amazing person for Naomi and Creality to get that machine to to fine tune it. And I think that. I think that. That's the one, right? That's the. That's because obviously there's so many. There's so many different i3 designs and there's so many different stationary bed designs, but really we haven't had a proliferation of, of belt printers. I mean, we've had what Bill Steele did. We had that other guy that made one that I saw at like Maker Fair on YouTube at one point, but, but the CR30, I know Naomi has said it's her baby because she championed it and then Carl's got it. And Bill Steele has blessed it. And this is, I think this is the culmination of so much awesome that's going to that's going to bring about a serious change within the additive community because never before have we been able to, using such a, a smaller machine, be able to print such larger parts without having to, you know, connect them together subway. So the C, I think the CR30, I think because of what it is and how it's being tested and what it's going to do is going to be a game changing device in the 3D printing community. And that's what I want. That's what I want to evaluate. I just want to, I just want to hold it. I like, I want to put straps on it and carry it around my back and just be like, you good. And then it'll, won't say anything because it's a printer. Your, that's Thanos, what I your Thanos sword could have been done in two prints each half. Oh, well, yeah. Well, Carl did it. Carl did it on his white knight, right? He did that Thanos sword in two parts, put it together and held it over his head. I know you have the one behind you. Can you possibly show that to everybody? That one over there? Yeah, and I can full screen you. Uh, uh, it's really, I, I put it back in a way that doesn't allow it to move really easily. Okay. <laughs> so I can't really, I can't really take it off right now. <laughs> I remember on Cheddar, you, you have the front finished and the back isn't so you can show people all the different That's sections right. and how it goes together. Yeah, that's right. I've never thought about doing that. That's an interesting concept, half finished, half unfinished. And then you can explain the process. Well, next time you go and paint something, uh, put a piece of tape, just kind of cut it in half with tape and then finish the one side, leave the other side totally unfinished. And then you can use it as a, a teaching piece or an interesting art piece, almost like a deconstruction, right? If you could, if you could put, uh, if you could tape off sections as you go, because you could have the bare print and the first coat of primer, second coat of primer, maybe a base layer paint, and then finished paint or something like that. And here's a teaser of something you're working on, possibly for a possible video. If I could maybe. show this. Maybe. <laughs> so everybody needs to look at that because it looks huge, but the camera is super close to the mini Joel feet and my face Oh. is further away. Remember that build plate is huge. And so everybody's like life size and it's not, it is not life size. And so because of all the comments, I've had to rethink what I'm doing. So those feet right there are, it takes three of those to make up my foot. And I wear a size 13 us shoe. Wow. So I would have to, and that's that, that mini Joel that's printing right there. I split up to three pieces. So I wouldn't have to use supports. And I wouldn't have to worry about the crotch getting all messed up. Is 800% scale. So to make it at least the feet life size, I, I don't know, for height, it, it's a mini Joel. It shouldn't be as tall as me. But for the feet, uh, I would have to 3x that. So it would have to be 2400% scale, which I'm more than happy to do. The problem is it'll take years to print and I, a lot of filament. And so if I can, if I can find someone who wants that done and wants to supply the filament to do it, then I can do it. So I might have to put that on hold because I feel like expectations aren't, aren't going to match the reality of what I present. You know, here's a mini Joel that's bigger and people are going to be like, I thought it was life size. Marcel Robert. Oh, Joel, I found your channel because you did a 3D printed R2D2 a while back. I've never done a 3D printed R2D2. <laughs> Thank you for finding his channel. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you finding me. I don't, I've never done a 3D printed R2D2. So uh, maybe I did a 3D printed Dalek, which is another rolling droid. 
What layer height is that? You're talking about the mini Joel feet. That is 0.5 millimeter layer height with a 1.2 millimeter width uh, bead of filament coming out of a 1.0 millimeter nozzle. Hello, David Petzl. Uh, he does, uh, he's over on Thingiverse. He does all the pet spangs for all my printers. Sweet. Yeah, he designed all the pet spangs. That's who David is. So. Well, well hello. Joel, what's been the most exciting 3D printing development this year, printer or model? Boy, that's... Um, uh, that's a tough one because uh, there's so much happening on the industrial side that's really future-focused that it's it's hard to kind of... It's, it's, it's hard to just remember it all. I like the CR30. I mean, on the consumer side, that's great. For the uh, on the industrial side, uh, I always I always suggest you go to uh, Fabulu. My friend Sarah Gerke writes for Fabulu. Everyone at Fabulu is great, but go to Fabulu for industry news. They're good. Mylan, uh, yeah, that is uh, Sunshine Turbo, and he calls it the NG. <laughs> that wouldn't Did be this model, one? would it? Yep, that's that one. This is for an upcoming video I'm going to have out tonight. I printed the working the little three cylinder engine pistons. Yeah. Pistons can you the top fire turns transmission back here? But anyway, yeah. can you blow through the uh, the crankshaft like he does in the video? Can I what? The crankshaft. He has uh, and uh, remember the crankshaft is hollow because for for air or oil circulation. But he showcases it by putting one end into a cup of water and blowing at it, and bubbles coming out the other end of the crankshaft. Huh, this is, must be a different model. It came off of Colts, and uh, I'm not sure. That's the same model. Yeah, that's the Sunshine Turbo model. Okay. Yeah, there is a hole in the front on the harmonic balancer, and there's a hole in the crank. Yeah, blowing it. See if air comes up. Yeah. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you need to fine-tune your printer. That's what it's for. <laughs> that's pretty cool. It's yeah, great. Yeah, that, that is Sunshine Turbo. And if you if you uh, if you haven't seen the video, you should go watch it. It's amazing. Let me jump back to chat here. Let me pull that one off. Uh, Carl's got to run. I just see it in the chat. Next three design. See you later, Carl. Go Take hug care, that Carl. CR30 Thanks for me. By. Like, lick it. Just just lick a part of it for me. For me. It's terrible. Um. <laughs> When you first got into 3D printing, were you considering having a channel at that time or did you take it on as a hobby and it kind of worked into it or? I got into it because it was nerdy. And within two days of opening up my first printer and playing with it, my first thought was I'm going to make money. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so I made a bunch of, I, I used uh, Photoshop and Illustrator because I was working for Adobe at the time. I used Photoshop and Illustrator to create 3D models of cookie cutters, and I sold them on Etsy. And I and I made, I mean, I didn't make a, a, a tremendous amount of money, but I made enough to where I was like, huh, there's something here. And then uh, I wanted to teach people how I was doing some things, so that's when I started the channel. And then the I started having to decide between investing time in the channel or investing time and the in creating stuff for sale and so did i want to become a manufacturing business or an educational resource and uh i ended up on the educational side and then you worked out of your home and then once you ran out of room in your garage or your hobby room you moved to down the street or yeah i got a little, a little studio space close to the house it's walking distance if i'm feeling frisky <laughs> we got wildfires man we have uh, on the eastern part of the state of Washington and uh, south of us, we've got some fires going on. And so it's smoky outside my house. Uh, I, I drive and I have the recirc air turned on in the car because it's uh, it's enough to make my eyes water. It could be that well, I'm sensitive. I went outside yesterday here and it was kind of a cloudy haze out. And it was the wildfires in California blowing into Vegas. I couldn't see anything. The mountains, the casinos on the news, anything. And today it's been extremely windy. It's been blowing everything around. So hopefully it'll blow all the smoke out of town here. I hope so. Yeah, we need some wind here to kick it all out. The problem is uh, fires on the east part of the state 
are happening and we're getting easterly winds bringing it over the mountains and so it's just it's not enough to create amazing sunsets but it's enough to make going outside just sucky yeah and when i got into the hobby i started out let's see what room was i in i think i was in my front room in the front of the house with a little tiny dining room area and then in the back room, which I'm in now, used to be a living room. My house has basically two living rooms side by side. So I took the largest room in the house and made it into a hobby room. Um, <laughs> we used to have a, years ago, I had a pool table in here, and then it was a dining room for get company. But, you know, we're talking, you know, major holidays, the only time I'd ever had people over here. So the room just sat empty. And here's a picture of what it currently looks like right now. It's kind of a mess. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. You got more room than I do. Yeah, got stuff everywhere. This desk right here was lined up where the hypercube was down there. And I had very little room with my chair, you know, hitting the back where that uh, air purifier is on the floor. So I turned it about a week ago and I, I just love it now. It's, I got tons of room to walk around and move. And it's, I just love how it looks now. You should, uh, wait, go back to that picture. I got an idea. Yeah. So where your, uh, your studio light is right there, that's on right now and illuminating you, right? It's pointed straight up, yes. Or pointed straight up. Okay, so you're using bounce lighting just like I'm doing. Uh, here, let me show you something. Here, hold on. There we go. So this is what I had before, right? It's very similar to what you have. Uh, I've got, well, I've got a light up there. You're shining a light up there and bouncing it. Never mind the harsh shadows on my face, but the, the whole... It, it, it just, it, it looks like I'm in a room with some light on and I wanted to change it. So I got a light, uh, I got a light up there. So bouncing up there and that's creating that, that bounce to, to light my face. And then, and then I can turn off the overhead light. So I've got, uh, I've got now this this bounce light illuminating me, and obviously some of my screen you can see in uh -huh. my glasses there. But then that back there, the light falls off enough to where it doesn't really illuminate it. Uh, and then I've got a little RGB light over there just to kind of shine a blue light. You can see it right there, kind of reflecting off the metal. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I mean, you got a really wicked cool space there. You could, you could, if you could just maybe get a grid on your face some sort of some sort of really soft light just hitting your face and then and then turn off lights behind you but use some sort of colored fills i bet i don't know i want you to do that change that up just test it you don't have to do it forever just test it i want to see it here's one thing i can do see how this helps i can change the brightness right now see that's lighter and i can say darker darker but Sure, but that's a global brightness, right? We're, yeah. we're going to do uh, specific stuff. I don't know. It's just an idea. See what you can do. Well, thank you. I'll work on it. Yeah, when I tape my videos with OBS, I usually have my overhead light on. The room is really bright. I look at what I'm filming, and it's washed out. So I jump into my Logitech settings, and I try to tone it down to make it look better. And then usually I have to turn off the overhead and just have my two box lights aimed up. So I'm... And I watch people like you and other people that are streamers and their video quality is just so amazing. It's unbelievable. It's really sharp and crisp and I'm trying to achieve that. So I'm slowly working on it. Well, and if so, when I, first of all, Photosmith said, said I needed makeup and I don't disagree. I'm an old man. You shut up. But, <laughs> um, uh, but, but for you, Jerry, I think, I think what I suggested might lend itself to giving that appearance because you're going to make yourself and whatever's on on your face, whatever's on that focal plane, more the, the the subject. And so because everything behind you will be a little bit darker or a different color, it will automatically cause everything to kind of focus in on you. And it okay. might provide a better quality image, maybe. Okay. I'll work on that today after the stream, trying to get that sure. right. Something to try. Just uh, just remember, just get yourself some soft light, just some, uh, just, just some soft light. And then behind you, I don't know. Kick it up with some RGBs. Be crazy. See what happens. Yeah, right now, the printers just have these white LEDs that are on. They're not controlled. I know. Or anything. It's boring, right? Yes. So, so what have we got in comments? 
Jim Edutech, under the cabinet lights would be great for what Joel was talking about, Jerry LEDs under the shelves to light up each one and turn them lights above you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh obviously, I mean, I could I could follow some of that advice back here too. You just want to uh the goal is to provide separation between you and your background. And then that will automatically increase the the sharpness, or at least what people can pay attention to, just by way of you providing some sort of separation. And then and then you you just RGB it up, right? And you get yourself some, you know, you go all Linus tech tips and get some RGB back there. <laughs> um, next question, if I could ask. Do you have any other hobbies other than 3D printing or things that you've done in the past or things that you love to do that we don't know about? Uh, let's see. So um, I could build a house. I'm, I'm competent in construction. Um, I, 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 I know how to do electronics. Uh, I've done some coding. Um, I've written a game and an app. I was, I was, I was, this, I was the software developer for uh, my, a startup company. So, I mean, I know, I know a little bit there. Uh, I play, I, you know, we, we hang with the kids. Uh, I watch TV. I eat ice cream. Those are hobbies right there. Watching TV and eating ice cream. There's uh, I, so, the problem is right. What I do right now is such a startup that it's, it's hard to, it's hard to find downtime. And I know I need to, and obviously it's way better health wise if you find some downtime, but uh, I don't have a good concept of downtime. And so I'm always, I think what I need to get back to is, is printing for fun. I, I, I haven't, I haven't printed something in a long time that was just for the fun of it. Everything has been for an episode or for filming or, you know, to, to do something. It's been, uh, uh, I printed a pencil holder for a friend. I didn't tell anyone about it. I just printed a pencil holder because she wanted one. And then I gave it to her. I didn't film a video or anything about it. It was wonderful. I got to do more of that. Yeah, Jim mentions you have an Oculus Quest. So you do, I do. You like to play a lot yep. in VR? No, I don't. It's sat on the shelf for weeks. I don't have time. <laughs> one thing I hated to see is when they came out with the Oculus, came out with the telephone app where you put the phone in the little goggles and that's not VR. That's complete garbage compared to a nice setup on your computer or your PC. I've been well, I mean, come on. It's it's not garbage. It is a it is a less optimal experience, but if that's the only thing you have, that's not bad. It's better than nothing. But people might see that and think, well, this is all VR is, and then never try anything else. But it's so much above and beyond that. Like I have a Vive, for instance, in an Odyssey. And I got the Vive when it first came out. It was like $950. And I was so happy. My wife wasn't. I spent so much money. But the experience was so great. If I had to sell my truck to buy the Vive, I would have done it. Because that's how great I think it is. And since around 1991, when I first got into computers, they were talking about VR back then, which obviously couldn't happen. But... I've waited most of my life, and I'm now 56, and I just love being in VR. And I have a <laughs> game called Elite Dangerous. I like to play a lot of space game where you run different missions and you build up credits in the game. There's hundreds of billions of galaxies, hundreds of millions probably, in this game that you can explore, planets you can go to. And, you know, it's, it's amazing. You, you could play it forever and never see the whole, be, explore the whole game. It's just amazing. And when you're in VR and you look out the window of your spaceship, Everything there's that giant plan or that space station. It just looks so real. Okay, I'll quit rambling. Anyway, <laughs> no, that's awesome, and I, I'm glad that you found a way to enjoy it. Uh, I like a good Beat Saber, right? I, I mean, that's why I bought my Oculus Quest. It's a Beat Saber machine, essentially. And then my kids got it, and then they started playing games, and now it sits because I just haven't had time to. Because when it gets to be like um, midnight. And I'm like, okay, now I'm going to do something for me. My wife's asleep. The kids are asleep. I'm like, I'm going to do something. You know what I do? I sit on the couch and I watch cartoons. <laughs> yeah, I have a big problem being retired. I get on Netflix and start watching this series uh, after this series, you know, uh, one after another. And then I wake sure. up the next day and I start watching one after another. And then I tinker with my printers. And so it's a lot of fun. I enjoy being retired. But the days go by quicker being retired than when I was working. Because when you're at work and you're watching your watch thinking, well, when can I go home? And the days are so much longer. And when you're retired, it's like Zoom. They just fly by. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Well, when you're working for yourself, it just flies by too. Do you ever have any free time where you just turn off the internet, turn everything off, and you just you and your family, and you don't check your messages? Sure. Oh, sure, but it's just not as often as I would like it to be. Do you invest? Because, in, what do you invest most of the week into your channel and producing things, or uh, the weekend? Well, most of your week during the week is that constantly three uh, D printing, nerd this and that, making Don't. content. 24 hours a day is constantly this constantly. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there are times when I, I do have downtime and I, I'm like, I need to, put, I need to check email, but I don't want to. So I just don't. Um, uh, but, but uh, I'm working towards it, right? That's the goal. That's the goal is to work towards it. And I'm slowly getting there. I like doing stuff. Like I like being active. And so if I'm taking downtime, I don't feel like I'm active. And so I want to be active. Ah, oh, Fotus, what's my favorite cartoon? I saw that. So uh, I usually just watch Futurama reruns because that's the best show ever. I love Futurama. I love it. Just reading the questions here to see what's pop up on the screen. Oh, okay. Tor in California says, uh, thank you for taking the time to come out, Joel. He oh, works well, for Tim, he works for Tim over at TH three D. Oh sweet. sweet. Valve Index VR, is it worth the price or should I buy the wireless quest? As I at present have been shopping for one. Uh, the Quest is going to be coming out with the Quest 2 soon, right? Isn't because uh, Facebook acquired Oculus and Oculus is now Facebook Virtual Labs. And so I think they're prepping a, a, the next Quest, I think. I don't know. Uh, I had some, you know, I had points on the credit card. And so when I bought my Oculus, I, I used my points. So it wasn't, it was just like a, I mean, it wasn't free, but it was free. So I, I didn't care. I bought it. I wasn't going to wait. I know, Amanda. Yes, I have to take time for me, too. I, and I do. I do. I promise. I just need to do it more. Hello, Mr. Buttram. How are you doing? Hey, he said it's a great stream. I mean, I can't argue with that. Until I run out of things to talk about, that's why I love questions in chat. Oh, everybody's chatting it up, man. See, look at that. Amanda and Jim both say, yes, Quest 2 is coming. Yeah, see, I was right. Breaking news. Other people knew stuff. I originally bought a Quest uh, or an Oculus when they first came out, but it was on back order, and then they put me off for another month, so then I switched to the Vive, and I'm glad I did. Um, and then about a year later, my son at work for the Christmas party, he won an Oculus. And since I already had the Vive, I didn't buy it from him. He wound up reselling it. But I have a lot of fun with the RVs. That's a great Christmas. That's a, that is, wait, he won the Oculus. Yes. That's, that was a that is event. great. And then all this stuff happened that's going on in the world right now. He was on furlough and now he's unemployed. So they laid him off. So uh, a lot of other people, that sucks. Shouldn't have he sold his Oculus. Office. He could have used it now. Yeah, in the IT department. Well, now he's a teacher at home because his kids can't go to school here in Vegas. So he's busy with his kids all day long with homeschooling. Oh, uh, we're remote here. I mean, they, they, we have Chromebooks from the, the district. Uh, no, we're not homeschooling. Uh, they're just doing remote learning. So the the, yeah. the state is mandated, at least our school district is remote learning. And so 399, September 16th. Oh my gosh, that is eight days away. So uh, our school district is remote. And so we have three kids and each of the three kids got a Chromebook distributed from their school. And they've got modified schedule. So they're not just staring at a screen for hours a day. And uh, the the class time is more, but the class load is less. So rather than being a whole bunch of classes, they have the classes, but then those classes are kind of longer. And it doesn't mean more video time. It means just more time spent for that class. And so it could be the teacher gives instructions and then they can shut down Zoom and actually write or draw or do whatever they need to do. So that's kind of handy. Uh, Joel, if you could interview anyone you've never met that was a maker, who would it be? Uh, I would like to travel back in time 
back to ancient Greece, I think being present when calculus was discovered or invented, I think that would be amazing. I mean, that's the ultimate make right there. You're making math. I think that'd be amazing. Is there anybody currently living that you'd like to meet you've never met that's a maker? That I've never met. Uh, Uh, what's his name? Nick, uh, Nick Offerman, right? He was on, uh, Parks and Rec and then he was at, uh, Making It with Amy Poehler. I think, uh, I'd like to meet him. He's good. He seems like a good dude. He makes okay, stuff. Jim, Jim just wrote that down. He's going to research it. <laughs> well, he's got to research what? Who, who it is you've never met. I'm assuming that that would be a great idea for a future live stream. Nick Offerman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you let's see, Nick Nick Offerman. Yeah, he's married to Megan Mullaney. Yeah, yeah. He he is super friends with Jimmy Duresta. In fact, on making it, they brought in Duresta to do the help with all of the contestants who were making stuff. I met I Jimmy. Chris, he's a good dude. I had Chris Riley on uh, three or four weeks ago, and. He's never met teaching tech Michael down in Australia, and Michael's always wanted to meet him. So I pee and Michael. We're Facebook friends. I said, hey, Michael, Chris is going to be on if you want to pop in the chat and say hi. And he says, hey, send me a link. I'd like to drop in and talk to him. I've never met him, and he's awesome. So I wow, surprised Look at you make, making connections just so, like that. It was pretty cool. I did tell Chris beforehand when he popped in 10 minutes early that I got somebody special coming in, but I'm not going to tell you who it is. And I kind of left him hanging. So he was still surprised. Such a trickster. So I don't want to have two people on screen. All of a sudden, there might be a conflict, and I blow the screen. Yeah, that'd be bad. Something goes wrong. That'd be bad. Don't do that. Uh, whenever I do my live streams, when I pop into uh, a Hangout or somebody's streaming, and I, or I just go live myself, it doesn't bother me. But like I've mentioned every video, whenever the timer's counting down, I'm waiting for my guests to pop in, etc. I get kind of wound up and tight and nervous. But once the really? stream starts, yeah, I don't know why that happens, but I'm trying to make everything perfect and click on the right things. And, you know, I don't know why. It goes away uh, after about five minutes. Okay, good. I was going to say, you're a great host. You just have to, I mean, it's out of your control. So you just, uh, you just, you just roll with it. I don't know. Take a shot before you go on, on the air, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Jerry, a 3D printing matchmaker. Yeah. I mean, it's a weird way to put it, but yeah. Look and I know that I know the answer to most of this, but I'll go ahead and ask for those who don't know. Joel, are you married? Do you have kids? And do you have any yes. pets? Yes, I've, I'm married. Uh, we've been married. What year is it? It's 2020. So we've been married 17 years. 17 years. And we have three kids. And we have three dogs. We have Maya, who's a, who's a, a big Roddy. We have Captain. I don't remember what he is, but he has two different. He's got dichromic or with the two different colored eyes, so that's fun. And then we just got, uh, we just got Dak or Dakery, and she is a, a little, a little pit bull. Just a little one. Yeah, I have two. Currently, I have two dogs. I'll show a picture of them here. This is Sandy, the brown and white one. She is a supposed to be a terrier boxer. I've had her for about two months now, and that the black one is Nikita. She's a black Jack, part Jack Russell, part uh, black lab. Cool. They're both great, great girls. One of my other dogs passed away about three or four months ago, so I repa replaced her, and it's really sad when animals uh, leave us. I don't think it's a replacement, right? It's it's you you've added something as something. It's not you're not. It's not like a. I don't know. Is calling it a replacement really the, the right term? Well, any family member, yes. <laughs> I don't always choose my words carefully a lot of times. Uh, my dad had a sign when I was a little kid hanging in the garage. I had a picture of a gear and a person thinking. It said, be sure your mouth is running before you kick your brain in gear. And I've always remembered that motto. So quite often people say things before they think about what they're saying or it comes out wrong. There we go. There we go. Heterochromia. Heterochromia blazed by... Uh, in the chat, please, by Yeah, there we go. Uh, well, Steven, Lightspeed. I remember when Joel used to drink on his channel. Uh, I've, I've drank during streams 
The only time I've really featured alcohol, though, I think was the Dremel review when I had a Captain and Coke. Right now, I've got a uh, a Killcliff. It's lemon. Focus. Is it going to focus? Let's see. There it is. Legendary lemon berry. Clean energy. Cool. Hello, Brian. How you doing? Brian Vine showed up. I love Brian. Such a good dude. Kill Creations, he has a great channel and a lot of great videos, Chris, over in Colorado. And apparently that's why he drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking coffee right now, which is decaf. My doctor said I should go to decaf. But I drank a pot a day my whole life, and it don't wake me up, so I had a good energy drinks. So I drink probably two or three a week. Uh, okay. You can orange monsters. They're real good. Right now I'm drinking one of my wife's Cokes, which she's going to find out right now. She's well, there you go. <laughs> Those taste drink, better with a shot of rum. I drink beer occasionally. I don't drink hard liquor very often, once in every million years. Okay. I don't drink that much either. It makes me tired. Um, do you have any teasers of any upcoming projects that you might want to share or just a picture that we showed? Or um, There we go. We've got you this is a tie interceptor it's made uh it's made like this oh focus. So cool. there we go look at that that's cr6 doing a job and then you put it together like this put it together like this but um here's my teaser ready wouldn't it be cool if this was bigger <laughs> Yeah. It's also uh, a little bloody falcon there. Yeah, I seen that yesterday on Colts. I was looking at that, thinking about downloading it. Yeah, I found it on Reddit. Reddit user Fixum Dude. Wait, let's see, because it's on here. There it is. So, focus. Fix some dude, fix some dude. Reddit user fix some dude is the one who posted it. I saw it on Reddit and I was like, I should print that. That looks really cool. And it is really cool. Oh, here's a teaser. My, uh, my, <laughs> my, my CR6 SE, my Kickstarter version is not performing as well as my pre-release version. What type of film are you using? Brand just whatever you have at the time? Uh, I'm using the filament that Creality provided with the machine, and I'm slicing using the slicer that Creality provides. So I'm using their entire ecosystem, and it's not doing what it should. So, yeah. I've used Simplified 3D for over three years now. When I've got my first printer, I, you know, of course, I was reading on the Facebook groups and at the time, everybody's like, buy Simplified 3D. So I paid $150. I figured, mm -hmm. well, let's buy the best possible software at the time. If I'm going to put all this money into this hobby with the filament uh, money and, and the printers, etc. And when I got the Ender 3 V2, the Creality sent me to review a while back. I figured, well, let's try the Creality Slicer. As if I'm a new person, I've never used Cura before, any version. So I made a video on it, and I printed with Cura for the first time, and I, I even had to Google a few things and I had to change a few settings. I wasn't sure what to do, so I Googled it. But strictly on the Ender 3, I'm using the Creality Slicer on my and my other printers. I use Simplified 3D. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm using the Creality it. Slicer for the Ender series and the other ones. Uh, Creality has built-in profiles that work really well. That's what I use for the CR6. That's what I use for that CR6 back there. But uh, uh, Simplified 3D, yeah, I bought it a long time ago. Geez, you bought it three years ago, so it's probably you bought version four still, right? There, version five has been in works forever. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people they keep. Uh, Jared has a question. Uh, how do you like those two minis, Joel? The oh, the the Prusa minis. Uh, neat little machines, right? Uh, very minimal in what's needed to put them together. Uh, but I printed uh, well that Millennium Falcon that I showed you right here. Oh, guess that was printed on the mini. Looks pretty good. And I got a lot of printing to do on that one. I got to print me a mini Joel, see how it can handle my crotch. 
Boy, I clipped that audio just right there. Oh, good. DB3D Dan put the link to the TIE Fighter out on Thingiverse. Perfect. Thank you, Dan. And Benny Brady, just wait until it starts a fire. Ha, ha, ha. So far, mine isn't catching fire. I, it's a very limited number of CR6 SE machines that are. I mean, obviously, people that have the problems are going to bark the loudest. It makes sense. But uh, I hope they fix it. Like, I hope they come up with a good solution. I know if they don't. I, I know if they don't, Naomi will 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 yell at them. <laughs> Rightly so. I don't need... Uh, so, hopefully they fix it. I don't know. I still got that other CR6 SE because I bought two from the Kickstarter with my own money. And I still need to take the other one out of the box. We're streaming tomorrow. I, I can announce, or at least I hope so. Fingers crossed. Uh, we're streaming. Uh, I have a craft bot. IDEX Flow Generation whatever it is. I don't remember the name, but we're going to get that out of the box and see how it works because I got a fun project planned for that one. It you involved have your, you have your daughter on with you or your wife or anyone else? No, you not on that stream. No. No. They'll, they'll, uh, my daughter might do a, a stream with me again sometime, but uh, that one's going to probably be... When's it going to be? It's going to be... Thank you, Full Throttle Junkie. Thank you very much. Yeah, one dollar, man. Cool. Three. On Thank YouTube, you. it takes 30 cents. So 70 cents, man. Awesome. Thank you. That's my uh, second ever donation. Really? Yeah. Uh, the other day, I got one from... Uh, his name is slipping me. I got a dollar. Uh oh Don't let the name slip you. Uh, Mart, not Martin. Um, God, he's watching. I know he's watching. Marcel. Yeah, Marcel. Oh, okay. Well, uh... Here, wait, let's see. Uh, I'm going to do something. Just got to poke a few buttons. Uh, what's this? Hold on. I don't yeah, Marcel. That? Marcel, okay, so you got it right. Yeah, I'm bad for names. Dude, I'm terrible. I'm terrible with names, man. The 3D print Viking, I had a giveaway last year. I was giving away some filament on different streams. I was giving away random different filament. From different companies and the 3d print viking one and i'm asking if he's in the u.s and i knew he wasn't it's thomas i know who thomas right. was but Not during the stream it just wouldn't didn't come to me bam wow. there we go there we Thanks go very much, Joel. <laughs> Joel. Awesome. Jeez. okay someone's got to do that come on come on i need to set up my stream deck here so it has an applause button or a thank you thank you very much that's awesome Country 3D, Walter. Hello. He was on a few weeks ago. Walter is I love awesome Walter. Guy. Such a good dude. I've met that guy. I like him. He's a good dude. Thank you, Jared. Thank you very much. Uh, Jared beat me. <laughs> Jared beat me. Yeah, that's cool. I give five because it makes sense contextually. One other question I wanted to ask you if I could. This will pretty much help everybody out, including myself. Okay. Do you have any advice for other content creators on YouTube or on a, or other platforms on doing videos and reviews? They want to become more awesome like you. Uh, well, let's see. I gave some advice earlier as far as lighting your stage a little bit better. So that's good, right? As far as creating the videos. Um, if I could go back and tell like Joel five years ago, dude, you know what? In five years, you're going to have this this plethora of of machines and you're going to be reviewing them and you're going to get to talk to people and you're going to have a number of subscribers and uh you're going to have uh, employees and you're going to do this stuff then then uh what would i tell that that joel five years ago and i would honestly i would just be like dude make time for yourself <laughs> like uh create the content you want and make time for yourself so look at this you oh my goodness wow you're getting some Stephen Lightspeed. Thank you very much for 1999. Daniel Stephen Norte, just had to get a bunch of Tesla rims. How did wow. Stephen do 1999? Thank you very much. He's got to get his Brian Tesla rims. Tesla rims. Oh, there we go. Country 3D 1001. Walter made up the penny. Walter made up the penny. So between him and Stephen, see, it's it's 30 in total. Because wow, Stephen, whatever. Thank you very much, uh, guys. 
uh, so I would, uh, I, any, anytime someone asks me this, I always say, make the content you want to make. Just, just do it well. Don't, uh, if you find that uh, early on when you're creating content, it's not exciting to you, then it's not going to be exciting to your audience. Find content that you want to make that you're excited about, that you want to make, and then make that content and then be passionate about showing it off to people. Don't just don't just be like, hey, everybody share my links. Why should they share your links? Why should they watch your video? Do a do a tweet stream, like do multiple tweets in a row talking about how excited you were for a specific thing and how it made you feel and how and how others should take a look at this specific part and and give you feedback on it. And and just I I the best advice I can give is just to to be passionate about what you're doing, be excited about it and and make the stuff that you love to make. I mean, obviously, uh, have good audio, you know, light your scene well, blah, blah, et cetera. But just 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 be passionate about the process and make awesome stuff. That would that would be really what I want to what I, what I would say to people. In a lot of my earlier videos, I had bad sound. It wasn't very good. So then I bought a little lapel mic on a like a 25 foot cord and then my wife said i can hear you breathing well i took it i'd have to take it off from my shirt and take, take pin it down further down on my chest because i could hear myself breathing on camera so <laughs> or you can turn your audio down just a little bit yeah i'm just experimenting especially on lighting trying to get it right i'm looking forward to seeing your new lights how you how you got a, a nice light wash over you and some excited stuff lit up behind you like like uh where did it say? Where did it, you just uh, that one you just put up? Where is that one? There we go. Yeah, Brandon. Now you can afford those RGB lights. See? <laughs> yeah, I want to go with blue, dark blue, because I'm I, blue is my favorite color. I'm kind of a blue nerd. I'm so. a fan of blue. I mean, uh, boy, some under some some lights underneath. See what you could do, Jerry. What you could do is get some lights in the background and have them react or have buttons off to the side that you can tap when something happens like if someone gives you a dollar you know have the lights do a pattern or something it's just it's just kind of fun i mean people obviously people like to give tips to the people that they want to support but but they also part of it is the the reaction and and seeing the the joy in the face of of who's receiving that monetary donation. Uh, I just, yeah, Stephen, I, I don't try to ask for subscribers what I do. So rather than saying, please subscribe, I just say, hey, if you subscribe, thank you very much. I don't want, I don't want to ask people to do something. I want to, I want to prove to them that I'm worth their attention. And then if I am, thank you very much. I think that's, that's kind of what it, uh, what it boils down to. Yes, Jared, I will definitely put that towards an LED Saturn. There you go. <laughs> uh, Pre-orders come out uh, for the next batch, like October, I think. October. I yeah, keep I telling they're... them. I'm, I'm telling them to open it up early. They don't listen. I'm hoping they hit Amazon by Christmas, but I'm not sure if well, that's going to happen. The pre-orders for Amazon will be either October or early November. Yeah, Jared's one of my Facebook friends. He lives here in Vegas. He works for a major hotel chain, and he's been over here a few times at my house. It's a great guy. Hello. Let's see. I guess that's about all, all I can pop up with. Um, this has been awesome. Do you freeze? Joel froze. Oh, no, he froze. <laughs> He'll be back here in a minute. Yeah, the banner, I, I got a banner coming in the mail, hopefully this week, that I had Robbie Mack design for me, and that should be here soon. Waiting for Joel to pop back in. Yeah, I'm not sure, Mike. When did you order it? Hopefully, you'll get it soon. Photos Mint, thank you very much. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Well, we lost Joel. Let's see if he pops back in real quick. Hopefully he didn't have an internet. The internet didn't go down. 
Yes, he did freeze. I'll give him a second here to pop back in. If not, we'll end the stream here in a minute. But yeah, I've got two or three more videos coming out this week. That's some great advice that Joel gave me on uh, lighting. So I need to work on my lighting. Some backlight would be really cool to have some blue light or something different behind me. My last Halloween party, I had my I had my smart lights set up to Halloween colors. I ran uh, bartending on the drink and slam with wizard staff. Hit a thunder lightning sound and spice blue lights. That's cool. Come on, Joel. If you're out there, pop back in so we can say goodbye to everybody. And I guess we lost Joel. So I'm not sure what happened, but I'm sure he'll email me and tell me what happened. So in my next live stream, I'll let everybody know what happened. So I'd like to thank everybody that tuned in. Uh, I'll be going live here on a weekly hangout here in a few days. And next week, we'll have another really awesome special guest on. So thank you, everybody. Please like and subscribe, share the video, and down below in the discount. Down below, there's lots of cool discounts. And all those guys and people that donated money to me, I thank you very much. That's awesome. Oh, here he is. Here he is. There he is. Oh, wow. The internet burped. We, we're having some, some wind and some smoke. And so it makes sense that the internet would burp a little bit. I was like, I'm like on my phone. And uh, I was about ready to jump onto the, uh, the stream via, uh, you know, the cellular networks. But apparently it came back. No, legit. Like I'm hardwired to the internet over a, a fiber connection. And it burped. So it's just, uh, that's just what happens, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm on cable here in Vegas. I recently upgraded to Gigablast, and I'm supposed to have speeds up to 1,000 gigs, and my uploads are like 35, and it's costing a lot of money. So anyway. I am symmetrical gigabit fiber for $80 a month, which well, is awesome. Anyway, I guess that's going to wrap it up, and I wanted to thank you very much for being on. Thank you, everybody donated money to me. Do you have anything you'd like to say to everybody, Joel? Um, I think that uh, here's what I want to say. It can, everybody can hear me, right? If the stream's going, we can, you yeah. can still hear me, right? Yeah. I think uh, what I want to tell everybody is, is people like Jerry are doing a tremendous service to the community. I think that not only does doing this weekly get his skills up, you know, everybody isn't a great interviewer at the start. You have to do it over and over. And because shows aren't happening right now, this is how we get to do it. So not only is Jerry becoming a better content creator, but he's also sharing all sorts of stuff with everybody out there. That's what I love about this. And so uh, I just want to give a big hand to Jerry. I want to thank you very much for having me on and for doing these weekly streams and for keeping the community connected in the way you do. Thank you very much, Joel. Uh, please stick around real quick and I'll talk to you in a minute. Uh, sure. Thank you very much for being on. You're an awesome man, and I love seeing all your future content, and I'm definitely going to watch your next live stream, which you said that's going to be tonight or tomorrow? Probably tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah. Sean's in town to help with some content, and so we might stream. We'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you very much. In one second, please. Sure. sure. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. It's been great. I'm so glad Joel came on. I learned a lot. We all got to learn a lot of things about Joel and a little more information. So please like, subscribe. Once again, thank you for everybody that donated to Super Chat. I appreciate that very much. And everybody have a great day.